welcome back to another video this really popped when i saw it that to me is a monster increase again this book got hot this book is ready to go higher so let's jump right into it we are back today with another statue review from diamond select toys without further ado let's get into the review What is going on YouTube? This is Lawrence over at Mighty Commons Collectibles and welcome back to another video. Today, I'm counting down the top 10 most expensive Silver Age comics of all time. But before we get into the video, like always guys, I'm gonna ask you, if you are not a current subscriber of the channel and have enjoying some of my content, do me a favor and click that subscribe button for me. You will not regret it. Smash that like button as well because it does help the algorithm out. And of course, turn on notifications because it lets you guys know when I post new videos. So a little bit of information, I took a 2.5 grade on all these books and I used a 90 day average from GPA for the prices. With the market coming in a little bit, I thought it was prudent to use the 90 day over the last sale. So you guys ready for the ultimate top 10 list? Let's jump into it. At number 10 is a copy of Avengers number one and the first appearance of the original Avengers team. This book was published in 1963 and featured five original characters, Thor, Iron Man, Ant-Man, the Wasp, and of course the Incredible Hulk. The 90-day average sale for this book was $3,710, but believe it or not, the last sale was $4,320, so somebody is finally jumping on this book. You guys have been known, I've been saying that this book is highly undervalued. I've been talking about it for the better part of two years, that if you could afford it, I would jump on it. Hopefully now it's starting to get the credit that it's due. If you guys want to own a copy and can still afford it, I'm shocked it's number 10. At number 9 on this list is a copy of Tales of Suspense number 39, The First Appearance of Iron Man. This book was published in 1963 and featured Iron Man in his original costume. I think a couple of issues later we got that full yellow armor and then a couple of issues after that we finally got him in his classic yellow and red suit. The 90 day average for this book is 6,300 bucks and to me that just seems ridiculously cheap still, even in a 2.5 grade. I always see this book around a 1015 go for over five grand. So to me, if you can afford this book, it's a massive book. I am hoping Robert Downey Jr. can come back for one more film and reprise his role because I think people will go nuts. This is a long term buy, you guys know that, and one of the best that Marvel has ever done. At number eight on this list is a book you guys know I know all too well. It is a copy of Fantastic Four number five, The First Appearance of Doctor Doom. This book was published in 1962 and features the best Marvel villain of all time. The 90 day average for this book is $8,100 and I can see this book going a hell of a lot higher. You guys know I just picked up a second copy of this one. I think once we see Doctor Doom in the MCU or even a hint of him, this book is gonna go wild. My favorite Marvel villain. And, and it's a credit to a villain being on the top 10 of his Silver Age list. It's quite remarkable and everybody else on this list is a hero. At number seven on this list is a copy of Journey into Mystery number 83, the first appearance of Thor. Now, Journey into Mystery number 83 was also published in 1962 and features an iconic cover with, of course, the character Thor. The 90-day average for this book was $8,850. Every time I see this book, I see it in low grade. I myself have a 1.0 copy. I don't see it too often higher than a 2025. I know they're out there, but to me, I think most of the copies that I've seen are lower grade, so I'm shocked that it's under 10 grand for this price. I know a lot of these books are super expensive for the average collector, but if you can collect them, these are the top 10 books that are gonna keep going higher and higher and higher as we get older. At number six on this list is a copy of X-Men number one and the first appearance of the original X-Men team. This book was published in 1963 and featured all of the original X-Men, Professor X, Cyclops, Angel, Jean Grey, Beast, and Iceman. Believe it or not, the 90-day average for this book is $10,373. It's still mind-boggling cheap right now. With the X-Men coming to the MCU, I'm not too sure if they're going to use this original X-Men team or the giant size X-Men team. i got to be honest, everybody has seen the giant size X-Men X -Men version of these characters in movies before. I got a hunch that Marvel is going to do something different and throw out this original team to start, and then we may get some individual other characters shooting through. Remains to be seen, but either way, if you guys own a copy of X-Men 1, you're doing just fine. 
At number five on this list is a copy of Amazing Spider-Man number one. Believe it or not, it's not the first appearance of Spider-Man. This is the first solo title of Spider-Man in his own series, but this also is the first appearance of Chameleon, I believe the first appearance of J. Jonah Jameson. Again, one of my all-time favorite covers and quite a pricey book considering there's no major first appearance in this book. Again, a beautiful cover featuring Spider-Man and the Fantastic Four. I'm actually shocked that it's number five in this list. I thought it'd be a little bit lower, believe it or not. But either way, an awesome book to have long-term if you guys could afford it. At number four on this list is the first Marvel family, Fantastic Four. Number one, the first appearance of the Fantastic Four. This book was published in 1961 and the 90-day average was $18,000. This book has been super hot ever since we got the announcement that the Fast Fantastic Four are coming to the MCU. And of course, we just got the first appearance of Reed Richards in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. I'm hoping that John Krasinski comes back and reprises his role as Reed Richards in a future MCU movie, although it's probably going to be from a different universe, which I'm fine with. But either way, if you were lucky enough to own a copy of this book at some point, you have been rewarded over the past couple of years, and I only see this book going higher. The one thing I will say about this book is it's one of my least favorite Marvel covers of all time. Now, we've gotten two Fox movies so far for the Fantastic Four, so I'm hoping Marvel gets this right because I think if third time is a charm, this has to be it. At number three on this list is the lone DC book of the Silver Age. It is a copy of Showcase number four, the first Silver Age appearance of The Flash, Barry Allen. Believe it or not, this book was published in 1956. That's still the Silver Age, guys. And this book, 90-day average, was 23000 750 bucks now hold up i couldn't use a 2.5 grade for this book because the last sale on a 2.5 was way back in 2020 and it didn't do the book justice so i used a 3.0 grade on this one so i'm figuring a 2.5 is probably just under twenty thousand dollars and that's why it's number three on this list you guys know i have been saying that dc books have been highly undervalued and they're about ready to spike i've been all over the batman keys i wish i could add some flash keys but to be honest this is the only book i'd really be interested in because i'm not a huge flash fan but if you can pull this book off man i see this book going a hell of a lot higher at the two spot is a book that is probably one of the most scarcest book on this list it is a copy of incredible hulk number one the first appearance of the incredible hulk bruce banner this book was published in 1962 and the 90 day average is 19,999 dollars Somebody go play Lotto because that is a lot of nines. With that said, this is one of my favorite Silver Age books of all time. Probably the, one of the most iconic covers of all time by none other than the great Jack Kirby. I absolutely love this thing. I, like I said before, this book is super scarce. If you could find a nice looking copy of this book, it will only skyrocket. This book has really taken off over the past year. I mean, this one used to be one of the cheap Silver Age Marvel keys, and now it is super, super expensive. So if you guys can afford this book, not a lot of people can. I was lucky enough to pick up my copy a few years back, so I got it for a steal compared to where the prices are now. I think this one, I think people are finally realizing, hey, scarcity is the key to this one. I see people picking up one through six right now if they can, because that's when they first run started. doesn't pick back up to 102. Regardless, guys, again, one of the most iconic Marvel covers, Marvel superheroes there has been, and it's number two on this list. What did you guys think was that number one? We know what it is. It is a copy of Amazing Fantasy 15, the first appearance of Spider-Man. First appearance of Aunt May, Uncle Ben, Flash Thompson, and everyone in between. The best, most iconic superhero of all time. This book was also published in 1962. My God, Stan Lee. Jack Kirby had an amazing, and I led Steve Ditko to that list, had an amazing run in 1962 and 1963. Quite remarkable. The 90-day average for this book, guys, is $43,400. $140. It was a hell of a lot higher than that before that last sale we just got of $34,000 and change. So again, an iconic book, an iconic cover, and the most expensive Silver Age comic of all time. And I only expect that book to go higher. This book has been on fire for the better part of a year and a half, and it's starting to trickle down now with the market pulling in. You not own an AF-15 and you want to own one, I think now is a great time to pick one up because the prices are falling. But long term, this book is the greatest I think comic book that has ever been written, right? It's the best superhero that's ever come out. Whenever I talk about it, I compare it to Action 1 or, or Detective Comics 27. They're in another realm. Golden Age books that have reached six-figure limits, you know, in low grades. This, of course, is a 2.5 for 40-something thousand. 
Um, this book will be unattainable, I would say, in the next five years to most people out there. So now's the time, folks, with the market correction. Now's the time to pick up this book if you can. With that said, guys, I have a couple of other things I wanted to mention about this list. One, like I said, is only one DC book on here, Showcase number four. I When I was doing my research, I looked into Showcase 22. Didn't even come freaking close. So one DC book on this list. Only one villain on this list. Doctor Doom is the only villain on this list that is at the price range as some of these other big key Silver Age books are. Remarkable for that villain two teams right we have the avengers and of course we have the x-men and fantastic four so make it three teams i apologize that avengers x-men and fantastic four so three teams three marvel teams appear on this list i thought that was quite neat as well and of course asm number one there's no major first appearance in that book i know we have uh, chameleon and jay jonah but that's it just a number one issue which i find absolutely remarkable so it just goes to show you how popular a character spider-man is Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is a fun one to do kind of the research of all the dates and find out the prices of these major keys. Stay tuned for the next one where I do the Bronze Age and hopefully I do a Golden Age and a Copper Age as well, depending on the outcome and the views on this video. So with that said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. This is Lawrence over at Mighty Comics Collectibles. Thank you, thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you guys soon.